Congratulations, men, on your last mission. Here's your next one. Today's target is the airfield at Abbeville in occupied France. Your bomber will be in the middle position. Your squadron will be flying at about 25,000 feet. It will be the middle squadron. Now let me show you where this target is located. It is here in zone 3, right across the channel. We expect very little resistance in zone 2, but heavy resistance in zone 3. You will have good fighter cover. Abbeville is the base of some of the finest fighter squadrons in the German Air Force, so they're going to defend it tooth and nail. So remember to stay in formation, follow your captain's instructions, and good luck. At around 0900 hours, the review copy takes off. It enters the protection of Zone 1. And then flies into Zone 2, where it has good fighter cover. The Germans manage to send one wave after the bomber formation. The enemy fighters make contact. A single Focke-Wulf 190 heads in the direction of our bomber. The bandit, undetected by our fighter escorts, starts a vertical dive. The radio operator, Derek Case, fires away, but misses. Next, Jimmy Castelli at the top turret fires. but fails to score a hit. The diving German fighter has the bomber in its sights and fires away. The Focke-Wulf scores one hit. The hit goes through the wing, into the landing gear, damaging the brakes, which will be sorely needed when landing at base. The Focke Wolf returns for another pass and approaches our bomber from the 1030 level position. The fighter cover fails to divert the bandit. The gunners prepare for another round of combat but realize that only one of them has an angle to the bandit. And that is the navigator, Keb Hipshot, at the port cheek machine gun. He fires away but misses. The fighter approaches and fires, but fails to score a single hit. He flies across. The tail gunner is waiting for him, but misses. The bandit leaves for home. The review copy enters the target zone where the weather is good. Fighter cover is also good. The Germans do fight for this one and send two waves of fighters after the bomber formation. The first wave makes contact. Four Focke-Wulf 190s approach a bomber. They attack from multiple angles, 9, 12, 130, and 3 o'clock. Our fighter cover appears and drives three of the four bandits away. Our crew prepares to deal with the remaining bandit at three o'clock low. The ball gunner, Joe Stedman, fires his twin machine gun and misses. Next, Lefty Clawland spray fires the bandit. The Falk Wolf continues to approach to deliver its attack. The German fires. Four hits are scored, including two in the fully loaded bomb bay. Miraculously, none of the bomb bay hits detonate the bombs. A hit in the rudder section manages to damage it, but it is operational. 
and the hit in the waist area only causes superficial damage. The lone fog wolf comes back for another round. This time from the 12 o'clock low position. Good fighter cover, however, drives it away. Next, the second fighter wave makes contact with the bomber formation. This time, three Falk Wolf 190s head our way. Approaching our bomber from the 10.30, 12 o'clock and 1.30 positions. Fighter cover manages to turn two of the fighters away. Our gunners prepare yet for another attack. The port waste gunner, Jason Young, fires his machine gun. But fails to hit. Next is Jimmy Castelli at the top turret. He fires. And also misses. Now the navigator, Kev Hipshot, fires away. To no effect. The German pilot moves in for the kill. And hits. But the damage is superficial. The Fockwolf flies across our bomber and the tail gunner fires at the other side, but fails to hit. The Fockwolf returns for another round, this time from the 9 o'clock low position. The fighter cover is good and it manages to drive the bandit away. Having dealt with the second wave, our bomber flies over target. Flak is light. And the review copy is not affected by any flak hit. The crew prepares for the bomb run. The result of the bomb run is that the bomber is on target. Bombardier Marco Arnaudo sets his sights and releases the bombs. Forty percent land on target. Our bomber now turns to head back home. The Germans, however, have other plans and send two fighter waves after the bomber formation. The first fighter wave makes contact. One Fock Wolf and three 109s. Three bandits in the 12 o'clock position and one at 10.30. Good fighter cover, however, manages to drive two of the four away. Our tired crew prepares again for another round of combat. First to fire is the ball gunner Joe Stedman at the 12 o'clock low bandit. He hits and the bandit goes down in a ball of flames. This is Sergeant Stedman's first kill. With only one bandit remaining, the bombardier Marco Arnaudo fires away, but misses. The German closes in for the attack. He fires, and also misses. The German continues flying across, and the tail gunner fires, but also misses. The German leaves for home. Having survived the first wave, now our boys have to face the second. Three Fock Wolves. Coming in from 12 and 3 o'clock. Fighter cover appears and manages to drive all three 
away from our bomber. Our crew sighs in relief. Our bomber continues and flies into zone 2, where the fighter cover is also good. And the Germans send no more planes. Our bomber continues and enters zone 1. The weather is also good. And having damaged its brakes, they prepare for a landing. Landing is successful, and our bomber and crew return safely home. Our bomber and crew came very close to destruction in this mission, but they succeeded dropping 40% of bombs on target. Sergeant Stedman had his first kill, and the result of the mission was a victory, the second for the review copy in B-17, Queen of the Skies.